Hey guys, Bobby Demiro here with BaseballCensus.com, standing next to Kyle Regnault, New York Mets left-handed pitcher. Uh, prospect, I suppose, you're also 28 and in the AFL for the second time, you've got yeah. a hell of a story. Um, and that's kind of where I want to start. We wrote something about you the other day, we'll link up. You have an unbelievable backstory. Indie leagues, not getting drafted out of college, dealing with injuries, dealing with arm injuries. Uh, and then a golf course meeting leaves an opportunity with the New York Mets. I guess let's start there. <laughs> how, yeah. how unlikely is this path for you? And, and kind of what does it mean to be here now in the AFL with the cream of the crop? It's exciting, man. Uh, you know, obviously not how you draw it up. And <laughs> um, Coming out of high school, you know, everybody dreams getting drafted. And when you don't, it's you know, it's a little bit of a letdown. And, and uh, But you just got to keep going. And that's kind of been the story as I've gone up. It's just keep, you know, keep your head down, keep doing the work. And eventually things will work out. And, uh, Man, after playing indie ball for a couple of years and not getting signed out of there too, you, you start thinking like, man, I'm that close, you know? And it, it's funny because all the years that I was here, I always felt like I could play with these guys and I could play with the best, but it was just that one opportunity. You know, it, that that's, never seemed to get. And that's maybe what strikes me about you, injury at a wrong time. Yeah, you went the yeah, JUCO yeah. route, which works for a lot of guys and, and in the long run worked for you. Yeah. Is it just a timing issue? And, and they always say, you know, if they're good, if you're good, they'll find you. That doesn't always work out. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta be persistent. It is, and I think timing has a lot to do with it too, but you know, at the end of the day, if, if one opportunity doesn't come, you just gotta keep going and wait for the next one and be ready for that next opportunity. So little did I know it happened on a golf course, but <laughs> you know, it, it was an opportunity, but playing indie ball also helped too, because yeah. if I said, hey, Phil, you know, I'm just a left-handed pitcher, okay, you know, but yeah. it was nice to have those years of indie ball too that he can look into and kind of get an idea of what kind of pitcher I was, so. The uh, Las Vegas Review Journal this summer did a great story on you, and that's kind of where I took the first angle when uh, when yeah. they kind of told that story. And it strikes me, you know, if you're a cynic, you'll say left-handed pitcher, there's jobs out there, man. Doesn't matter what you do, there's a job. And maybe that's true to get your foot in the door in the smallest sense. Yeah. You still have to prove it on the field. You still got to prove it in the tryout. You did that. How, how I guess, affirming or grueling or whatever were those first few affiliated years when you kind of went to St. Lucie and said, wait a minute, what I thought was true. I'm good enough to play with these guys. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was fantastic. And Phil Regan, he stuck his neck out for me. Yeah. So, you know, it, that first year that I that I played with the Mets, he was actually my pitching coach in high A, which was, which was awesome because he's a gamer and, and yeah. he's a, uh, He's a competitor, so you know if you meet Phil outside, he's the nicest guy you, you'd ever meet. But when it comes time to play, he's you know he's a competitor. So he really brought that out of me, I think. And spending that first year with him in, in St. Lucie was was an eye-opening experience for me. And and that was really the first time that you know going through college, I, I finished at University of Rhode Island. You're playing; it's a mid-major school, so you play a couple yeah. you know big big-time schools early on in the year. I remember going in, we played Florida one year, and I walk in, I'm like, man, this is Florida, you know, and all the guys on the team, oh, it's Florida, you know, oof. and then you get in, you beat yourself before you get in there, you know. And that first year in, in St. Lucie, it was, okay, I'm out there pitching, competing, pitching well, and I'll come back and be like, man, you still got that guy, he was a first rounder from Florida, LSU. And then you realize that it was just these guys who got these opportunities that may have helped them get to where they were, and, and you can just play, you just got to keep going, so. Um, that was that was a relief for me, you know, first getting out there that first year, getting that out of the way and, and coming out here and pitching well in Arizona the first uh, time around in 15. Um, so I, it was it was good. It was good to get out there and, and pitch well and kind of get that first year under my belt. You're an interesting guy for a lot of different reasons. You're 28 years old out here. I think you may be the oldest guy out here. No, 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 no. Mickey Janice, he's a little bit, he's my buddy. He's a knuckleballer with us. <laughs> okay, I was going to yeah. say, I saw him the other night. I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, you are a two-time <laughs> AFL guy. I'm sure yeah. he'll love that. Yeah, he will. Two-time <laughs> AFL guy now. You've Now that you've been in affiliate ball for a few years, now that you get AAA, and we'll talk about PCL in a minute because the, yeah. the travel there is a beast. Um, it is. It, how do you make the next adjustment? How do you not say, I'm good enough to be here. I'm good enough to stick now. I'm good enough to get to the big leagues. What's the next step for you? You just got to keep going and, and bend my mindset all along. And, and now this year it was good. I double A and triple A. I spent most of the time in triple A and, and had success. And it's just, you know, a, a guy like me, I feel like, you know, you have to kind of prove yourself more than once. Yeah. And, and that's kind of how it goes and, and for obvious reasons. Um, but, you know, for me, it's just going out there and, and keeping my routine the same and, and being ready for that opportunity. Obviously, the minor leagues is a little bit different than how they're going to use you in the big leagues. I think the prevailing thought probably is lefty situational guy, you know, late inning kind of lefty matchup guy. And in Vegas, you don't really have that luxury. You're going out and throwing two, three innings yeah. sometimes because yeah. that's 
the way the Pacific Coast League is, how do you transition in to get ready for that role? I mean, do you use the AFL out here to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to make it a goal to get every single left-hander out because that's what I'm doing in the big leagues? Is that, is that how you look at it? That's, I mean, as a left-hander, that's always what yeah. you're trying to do. So that's been something I've been focusing on over the past year or so. Um, but obviously, as far as roles go, you know, who knows what my role will be. I have a, I have a, uh, a four-pitch arsenal that, yeah. you know, kind of falls into a – you know, a longer relief guy because I could get through multiple innings yeah. with that many pitches. So you never know. I I'm ready for whatever they need me to do. So. I was going to say, it's not often you get a backstory like yours, and it's not often it comes to the four pitch arsenal. You yeah. know, a lot of times yeah. on the bullpen, it'll be two pitches. How have you noticed kind of using those four pitches, especially this year in the PCL when you get extended a little bit? How do you use, how do you hold back a pitch and then the next time through say, okay, you didn't see the slider last time, you're going to see it this time? I mean, is yeah. it just like almost like a starter? It is, it is, but it, it's very situational, you know. It, I like to say, you know, I have my way of pitching, like I like to set up a guy this way, this way, but it all turns out to, you know, what's this guy swing looking like on this pitch? What's his body looking like yeah. on this pitch? And you kind of got to go off those types of things to, it's almost like a situational, Yeah. Um, it's like a sit situational thing where, if, yeah, I'd like to throw this pitch, but ah, his body language, the way he took that pitch, I don't know if I want So it, it just really depends on the hitter in the situation. You uh, pitched in Las Vegas this year. I assume most people watching this will have never been to Las Vegas. Cashman Field is uh, interesting, we'll say. <laughs> definitely yeah. a hitter's park, definitely yeah, an interesting yeah. place to pitch. Obviously, the Mets are going to be out of there. This coming year will be their last year, and they'll be off to, what, Syracuse or wherever. Syracuse. Um, let me ask, let me phrase the question this way. Will you miss pitching in Las Vegas whenever the last day comes? <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people, PCL is obviously a tougher place to pitch, but at the end of the day, you got to pitch, you yeah. know, and, and yeah, you got to stay down. You got to stay down in the zone because, you know, the balls fly there, but also the, it, the air is so dry, the ground is hard, so you get beat on the ground at times too because yeah. balls come off the ground harder than they do, but um, it's just pitching, you know. I, I uh, obviously, you'd like to be in a more human environment like uh, the East Coast. <laughs> like St. Lucie. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great, you know, but you know, you gotta you gotta be ready for whatever whatever um, situation comes up. So I think the mentality of pitching stays the same. Um, I'm not going to be afraid to go up in the zone on a guy if that's a uh, a weak spot in his approach. You know, just because I'm playing it in the PCL. So. Um, and last thing, and a little bit unrelated, but I talked to uh, earlier this summer in August. I don't know if the name will mean anything to you, but Robbie Rin, uh, in rookie ball with the Royals, he's a Rhode Island guy, Rhode Island native. Really? He went to Bryant uh, University. And he talked a lot about how, you know, Rhode Island guys can play ball. I yeah. almost have a, a chip on my shoulder to prove against the Florida guys and the Arizona guys. Do you feel that way? I know you're proud about Rhode Island roots. Yeah. Do you kind of feel that way to say, a Rhode Island guy out here can do this, the Northeastern guys are just as good as anybody else. Yeah, exactly. I'm living proof. <laughs> it is, and you know, it's funny, I don't know his name, because Rhode Island's so small. Small and world, yeah. The amount of uh, players that come out of Rhode Island, it's a select few, so yeah. I'm surprised I don't know the name. But yeah, you know, always you want to prove yourself. And guys, you know, in Rhode Island, I think baseball in the Northeast has gotten a little better now as far as perfect game and all those yeah. summer leagues where guys can get exposure but it's tough to get out of there just because the amount of the amount of talent is is not like Florida you know so scouts aren't flocking to that yeah. to that area because there's just not as many players so um, you really have to to perform and perform well to get out of there so you know I have a lot of respect for the guys that come out of the Northeast and um, you know for me I I was an undrafted guy so you know I've Kind of my whole career has been trying to prove somebody wrong. So it's there's always that chip on your shoulder saying, look, I can do this. I don't know what you guys don't see. So I just got to go out there and prove it. We, I mean, maybe that's a good way to wrap it up then. You know, we can talk about pitches and pitch selection and repertoire and what you do in Vegas and all this kind of stuff. And it's all important on the emotional side, on the mental side, on the psychological side. You've proven everybody wrong. You've kind of proven, you know, maybe the people who've been in your corner, you've proven them right so yeah. far. How do you take the next step? Because I know that as, as nice as this story is right now, you have a very big step looming next year and the year after, and, and your biggest goal is ahead of you. What's the next step for you psychologically, emotionally, and, and how do you kind of climb that hurdle? Um, honestly, it's you can say it's timing, it's performing, but for me it's just it's doing what I'm doing. I got a good routine that I've been on, and, and I just got to keep going out there and, and pitching. You know, you're not, I'm not going to get to the big leagues by luck. I'm not going to get to yeah. the big leagues any other way. It's just bottom line is you got to go out there and pitch so that's, that's what I'm doing. 
There you it go. Kind of simplifies everything for you, you know. But yeah, just go out there and pitch. Good things are gonna happen. Spoken so. just like yeah, an spoken just like somebody. an indie ball guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kyle Regnault with the New York Mets. I'm Bobby Newman of Baseball Census. Thanks, sir. Right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Good stuff. Thanks a lot, guys.